Okie dokie, so <laughs> this didn't be interesting start to the end of this video, but this is something that I've been meaning to do for a good while. I was hoping to actually get some done for decon. That did not happen and I don't want to talk about decon because oh that one was so much stress. It was good like doing it once I got there, but it's like so many extra things. So I got on airbrush at Christmas time. <laughs> And I still have not used it yet. I really want to use it, but it is just like timing and everything. I was hoping to use it today, but just having to do the Pokemon shakers, which if you've seen another video, you can go check out my Etsy because it'll probably be there. But yeah, I needed to make sure my base ears were actually alright because I have a bunch of base ears that I made, but some of them not shown at all. These ones that aren't done, but they, they need redone. They need to be properly, properly done. This boy, which also is one thing I'm gonna say about this fur, it is really not my fur, and I've got a ton of it, so I'm gonna need to figure out what I want to do with that, and also to get like a nice fur that isn't super super long, but isn't too short, because you want to have like an extra little bit of a side, but you don't want it to be too long. So I've got one that's black and white here as well. I also need to figure out because this one's done using like a glue method. Method method where you like glue it and then squish it down with some pliers but like kind of creates this weird line and I don't know if that's going to go away once I actually start painting it or if that's something where I should really shave it down to the bone before I start airbrushing it. I have had a look at some like air making tutorials but like I don't know I don't the one was showing Warbler and then they showed the fur together which is something I have yet to try. I'm thinking hopefully maybe tonight I'm gonna get some sewn together because I'll get these all finished off and shaved, tidy up, then probably get make a new pair that's actually sewn together and see how that goes. Then I think it'll be kind of starting to set up stuff for actually using it tomorrow because I do want to use it. Now one thing I also have is these. These are for a cosplay <laughs> that they're, I think they're too big, like definitely too big. Um, <laughs> Like they work but I think if it just came out to here instead like slightly shorter I think it could work well I mean if I have it so that they kind of come in and down like this I think they work I'm still gonna finish them off because I might as well and one thing I wanted to do with them was take this kind of bit of fur here and airbrush it white to hopefully make it so that it's more white because I've used pastels to kind of dye the fur I also need to, actually I think this one is sewn and I think it does kind of create a nicer edge to be fair but this was hand sewn not actual machine shown, machine shown, <laughs> machine sewn so hopefully my machine will work. I might have to cut the very end of it, kind of like cut down the fur and then sew that so it's like just sewing the material together, maybe, I'm not sure because I mean from what I've seen on things like Instagram slash TikTok that people are uploading most of the time, they kind of like go right down to the, almost to the bone before they airbrush it. And I'm wondering if that does work because I'll be using air <laughs> acrylic and just mixing it with some airbrush medium that I got. So I'm hoping that'll work. I'll need to look up a couple more videos about actually using airbrush and stuff like that to do it. Cause I haven't seen any of those yet. Don't know if there'll be one using the actual airbrush I have. Hopefully there will be, but who knows. Um, but yeah, so I want to do this one, but I'm gonna sort it out, sort all this out tonight. And then the plan is, I still have a bunch of this, which is, as you can see on there, it's for the bag there, and I don't really need more for that because I used a lot for that. I also have these two bows as well. And one thing that I, I saw like on AliExpress, and I think, I think it's a little bit of a thing. <laughs> I don't quite know. Originally I was like, hey, maybe I could use this as like a choker and I could still do that. But part of me was like, I could make an extra bit for that. But this does fit about the size, yeah, maybe a bit longer to be honest than it needs to be. But it's about the size of these like headbands that you get. And I'm thinking what I could maybe do is make, make like rabbit ears that like hang off of it almost like that. But like maybe they come up to more of a point. And they hang off like that kind of thing and then have it nice and airbrushed and have like a strawberry sweets theme <laughs> that could be cool and then also I could like to help make the connection between like the actual like ear and the headband thing I could then use these on the side 
I think that would look cute. <laughs> so I also still have some of that sweet lace, which I used for something else I will show you. This sweet lace here, I still have, I think about 270, for some reason that's what I remember that name, number, 270 centimeters left. Oh, that's right. I sewed these together. Okay, yeah, so if you guys have not seen that video, I think it'll probably be up for this one, so go give that a canter. But I sewed these two bits of fur together. It definitely does create a good join, but the thing about this was I had two strips, shaved them down a bunch, and then what I did was I took the back strip of each, took a bunch of pastels and just kind of rubbed it on it <laughs> until it changed the color of the fur, hairsprayed it a bunch and then brushed it out, and then, it doesn't really smell like hairspray, kind of does but not really. <laughs> But yeah, that kind of like changed the color a lot. And I also tried washing it as well. It kind of brings out the color a little bit, but I'd probably only be hand washing this. So, you know, I would not put this in the machine because there's so much hand sewing and all the rest of it. And I'm like, I don't want the machine to just blow the apart. I also need to remember to take off these bows as well, which are still on here, surprisingly. Anyway, but uh, yeah, so I still have some of that sweet fabric. So I'm thinking that maybe I could have it so that the sweet's kind of jag off each end. I might put a bunch of extra onto this. I'm gonna go do a little bit of research as well into like the type of hair bows or hair bands, headbands? I suppose headbands is the easiest way to put it. Headbands I've been seeing and kind of like get a few kind of example images for what I want to go for for it. So yeah, that's essentially the plan for this video. So I've just got a lot of stuff to shave down. I do have like I got a lint brush, but it's not that effective. Like I thought it would still be fairly effective, but I think I need maybe one of those like actual pet hair like thingies that probably work a bit better. I was gonna get a lint roller because I forgot to take the one that's down the road up here, but I decided to go for the lint brush because I'm like, let's try and use something that I can like hopefully just take the fur off of and that'd be done. But it wasn't really working that well, which is not the best. But yeah, just got a lot of brushing. I a lot of that to do, so I will see you later. Oh, I also found where some of my fur samples were when I got some different like fur samples and stuff like that. So hopefully I should be able to do, maybe do a ear of that or something like that in the future. We will see, we'll see you guys later. <laughs> okay, so I just thought really quickly before I start, cause I think I'm probably gonna use the airbrush a little bit later on than when I was intending to start using it, but I think one of the big issues that I'm finding with this kind of fur that I have is that A, the black one is just terrible. I think I said that before, but it is just like really not great at all. So this I think will be good for smaller projects and testing stuff out. Possibly just, again, cause it's like way too big really, but testing things out and possibly trying to sort out kind of how I want everything to go. But the main big issue with both the white and the black that I got is I think the back netting. Now the netting for this one for the back is like quite like I would say thick. It's it's fairly strong whereas this one it's kind of not as strong. It feels like it falls apart way easier. This one's just a lot thicker. And so some of the ones that I've seen have been using ones that have like a lot thicker base to it. So I'm gonna see if I can't try and find something that is about this length, because I think it's a good length, but in white and black. So that's the ones I'd actually use to sell a lot of this stuff. I think this will be fine for maybe the charms and stuff that I plan on doing. But this is just, it's a bit, like the fur is not that great, but I think it'll be good to kind of get used to stuff and test stuff out. And then when I actually get a good fur like this one, it'll be, you know, have everything sorted enough just to quickly be able to make what I need to make. So this is the fur, because I forgot to show it, is the fur that I'll be using for the, the ears and stuff for the headband. And this one's kind of got very similar netting to this one, which is not that great, but it's kind of an in-between between the two. So I'm hoping that I should be able to work with this well enough, because this will just be one side of it and then the other side will be white. And I find the white's a lot better, mostly because the, the fur in general is a lot better than the black one, because it's just really not that great. So yeah, pretty much I think the plan is going to be I will get these ears. I mean, most of these ears are, I think are ready to be sprayed, but I think there's just some other things I want to do first. Um, another set of ears definitely that I have that I need to finish off 
And then I think I just need to do more research on how to use an airbrush and stuff like that before I actually use it. So yeah, hopefully I should be able to get to a point where I'm happy with what I have. Yeah. Well, welcome back. It's been a little while. I've mostly been working on making some more ears, so I decided to try and make some templates and just try and have different variations of different ears and try different things out with them. So this one is like horse. <laughs> Oh, if I can have it in frame. This one is like horse. <laughs> and, you know, the way I have these, because I've got wire running under the bottom, which some of them I don't have that with, is so that it can kind of turn in like this when it's being worn. I do have some headbands coming, but it could take a while to get here, so I'm mostly just going to hopefully prepare these and then show them off at the end, and you'll see them on the he headbands. But this is horse. Most of the new ones I made are in black as well, because I'm trying to use up some of that, even though it's not the best. So this one, or these ones, are rabbit, so obviously these ones would sit more on top of the head. I've also been trying to like pay attention to the bottom because a lot of them was just having them straight and they weren't really working, so a lot of them I've been kind of curving them around more. So this one's rabbit. Some of them don't quite match up, like you can see there's more, <laughs> if I could have it in frame, you can see there's more fur here than there is here, but my plan is I'm literally just going to trim it once I finish like painting it and everything. Then, uh, I think you've already seen these ones, these are kind of the small bear ones. Then another new pair I made were these ones. This was kind of like on the idea of like cow ears. <laughs> They're not quite actually how cow ears would look, but kind of rounder type ears that go on the side of the head was what I was planning on. Then I made these ones which were kind of dog, cat thing. Uh, <laughs> But mostly the thing I was looking at was, again, the bottom and just kind of having it more rounded because of where these would sit, you know, on the, the ear. So yeah. <laughs> Got these dog ones as well. I'll go like that. Then I also finished off these ones because these ones weren't needed to finish off. So one side is white and then the other is black, as you can see. And this one doesn't have as much of a curve on as the other one. It's all over. But I think it should do alright, if I'm honest. I don't quite know exactly what I'm doing with these ones and why I chose white and then black. Oh, I think I was going to do like a purple thing because I think these were the cosplay ones I didn't wear. <laughs> anyway, a different cosplay one. Um, and then I finished off these white ones because I don't think these white ones were finished off or they were kind of half done. Obviously you can kind of see through this white material, you can kind of see the back a little bit. You can see it's kind of red. Well, at least I can see it's kind of red and this one's slightly green. Even though I did paint the thingy, didn't I? I did not paint it, <laughs> but it is double thingy. I also haven't sealed these off because this is something I can do at the very end and it's like also good for now where I'm like, oh, I need to. Oh, I painted these ones. <laughs> painted these ones white, but didn't paint the red ones for, for some strange reason, but you know, that's these ones. So I'm thinking with this one, I do have this. This is the only actual airbrush paint I got. <laughs> I don't know how this is gonna work if, if it, you know, I'm gonna need to thin it or whatever. I would have gotten more paints, but I was just like, I want to try using my own, which is maybe not the best for the first time. I was also maybe just being a bit cheap and didn't want to buy a full on set. And I was just like, I'll just go with the white, see how the viscosity of it and see how it is and then mix my own ones because I do have a bunch of these, which are just these mixing pots that I think I got from like resin and silicone but I just use the I use a, a different plastic container for silicone and I just use the silicone cups that I have for my resin so I've never really used these also they're fairly small so you know you can't really mix a ton in them anyway and I just go by weight mostly even though it's not the most accurate measurement but yeah I could mix paints into these and then put them into the little bucket of the airbrush which I still haven't even turned on this point yet. I'm like procrastinating because I, I, I'm not a big fan of machines. I once I get used to them, I'm fine. But it is something where like I'm not the biggest fan of machines to start off with, and I often prefer to like be shown how to look. Okay, you do this, and then you put that on, and this does that, and all the rest of it. And I've been watching some videos, but there hasn't really been one that's like, okay, this is how you do this. This is what this is. I do have a good idea of what everything does, and you know, I think I will be able to use it fine. I think it's just going to be working on it <laughs> and actually doing it is going to be the first big hurdle. But yeah, I'll probably need to use the white on here and see how that actually does. And then I have the big one here, which 
Did I do much to this one? I don't think I really did anything to this one. I think I've just left it. And we'll just see how it does in general with like a thicker kind of coat of fur on it, I suppose. Then I also have the deer ones, which I'm going to probably just turn into rabbit ones, to be honest. But I do want to put some white onto here to kind of make it look more white because these were done with pastels as I said before most likely. On a kind of side note, I also got some more fur. So this is a kind of more short pile, but it's more thick, but it's not quite as long as what I'd need for the kind of fluffin bits. And then this one is longer definitely, but it's also not as thick. It's not as plush. So I feel like this could in a way work if it was just more plush so that's the unfortunate thing is you just kind of need to be like need to just try and find a supplier that actually like gives a good faux fur because i feel like a lot of the ones online look very very similar to that wispiness which is what i just want it just short enough so that it doesn't have that wispiness and i feel like it'd be perfect but i just have to keep looking for some in the meantime though i do plan on possibly making them into this kind of thing because i have it's gonna be a bit of a show and tell time all right <laughs> so i have these kind of like paw things that would this one would be kind of dog because it's slightly bigger and this one would be kind of like cat <laughs> doesn't really fucking matter if i'm honest but i have these and i made a whole bunch of stuff out of clay and then i put them into a silicone mold so i could make them out of resin so obviously the issue sometimes i have with the resin is like Sometimes it doesn't quite get to the end and I do use like a toothpick to try and pop any bubbles and make sure it does get to the end but unfortunately sometimes it gets cut off. I don't think it's necessarily too bad. It kind of makes it look a little bit more real to be honest. But I have these ones. I did try to do these kind of clay ones into resin but like I just, I'm gonna need to sand this down and all the rest of it. And then I ended up just cutting up one of the, did I put it on here? Yeah. <laughs> cutting up some leftover resin from uh, a silicone cup into like claw shapes so I don't know I'll need to figure out this one if I want to do claws but yeah the whole idea is that these will kind of be keychains and they'll have like a whatever that clip is called not a lobster but something else but hopefully with having these clay ones put into silicone and then being able to resin them I could have some really nice looking kind of keychain things because I think they would look really nice and then my plan for these ones is I'm going to get a bigger one and have this one like um uh I could use like this one for it and have it be uh a matasu even I was thinking of the name and I was like well can we wait no <laughs> that's the game but yeah this is stuff that I can a lot of these samples I will probably use for that to be honest and then just keep a scrap with a note of what it is and where I got it from kind of thing so if I'm ever like, oh, I should get some of that for this, then I know where to find it. Because yeah, I'm not going to be using them for the years, unfortunately. Still on the hunt, but I'm just going to get one every so often is the plan. Right, so I am hopefully going to get this done today. I do have some airbrush thinner and some airbrush cleaner from the same brand. And apparently there's flow improver or something, which apparently is also good to use as that kind of thinner if you're wanting to do acrylic paints because I've seen that in a video so I think my plan is going to be I'm going to start it with the white and just use it on some of these things where I want to use white on and then we'll go on to other stuff I probably won't film it just mostly because I <laughs> I don't like being washed and I'm probably just going to chuck the footage anyway but I'll hopefully show everything afterwards and we'll see what I get done but I need to also decide on what I'm going to do with with each thing so I'll see you in the next bit Okay, right, so welcome back. <laughs> um, so obviously I have been using the airbrush and kind of been trying to get used to, you know, mixing the paint and getting it thinner and all the rest of it. I think I've been doing a fairly good job. I'm going to properly clean my airbrush right after I do this because it needs a full clean out. So I used the airbrush paint onto this and I think it's made a bit of a difference but not a ton. I might try next time to mix my own white using the acrylic and it might give it a more harder white which is what I want. Now I did think on this one, I think it was on this one I added some white onto here and you can kind of see it there but I just think it would be easier for me to literally go in with these ones with just normal acrylic and just use a kind of toothbrush and like paint it on just to get a nice base. So I think that's what I'm going to be doing tonight along with a bunch of my other black pieces because 
I tried using a deep purple in here. You can kind of see it where it's kind of caught onto the webbing, but it really just doesn't hold onto the black, which kind of sucks because most of my test pieces are on black and the paint doesn't really seem to want to stick to it. Now this is possible, possibly, possibly because I'm not really using a lot of actual airbrush paints. Like this one is a mixture of airbrush paint and pink. So the airbrush paint obviously with the lighter is definitely kind of stuck to it a bit more. This area also here is very shorn down so it's stuck to that really really well. And then this it kind of just sticks to the top and doesn't really go anywhere. So I think I would like to maybe try it where I actually had proper paints but time wise and all the rest of it I don't think that's gonna happen. I think I'm just going to continue on what I'm doing right now, or my, my original plan, not what I'm doing right this second, which is to white out the areas that I want to paint onto, and then if I want anything with a gradient out or whatever, I'd literally just gradient it with the white, and that would help it stick more. So I might do that with this, but I'm also thinking I might actually leave this and do a second coat with this specifically to see if I can like make a difference here. So I think this one's going to be like for a second coat. So this I find interesting. So obviously I have this black piece of paper because I was doing white paint. But I find that I was using the same pink for both of these. The exact same pink. And one turned out lilac on the black and then one is actual pink on the white. Which I find really interesting. So I don't know whether it's something where, again if I was using <laughs> proper acrylic um, or airbrush paint even, it would turn up pink on both or if it's purely just because you know this is white and this is black and so it's turning up different. I don't necessarily mind the color difference I just think it's something where it's something I'll need to pay attention to if I wanted to do something like this and have one you know white and one black. Again with my idea of priming things with that are black with white where I want to paint them that should hopefully not be too much of a problem because it'll be going on to white but it also depends on how white I can get things. Also with the longer strands, I don't know how successful that will be. I might need to airbrush onto the longer strands and hopefully that they will kind of paint a lot better or I could just pretty much use white and I think maybe going forward that is something that I would consider is mostly just using white and then painting onto it. I would still maybe use black because I suppose I'd just have to paint white black in certain circumstances and that's not usually the best and yeah I know I think it would depend on what my plan would be for everything but yeah that was just something I did kind of relatively first and noticed and I was like oh okay then that's something yeah because um in this one it's the same pink on the outer edge and then I deepened the pink on the inside and it kind of has come out a similarish color so I think that it is just like the pigment I just need to have a brighter pigment when it comes to actually getting that kind of color Right, so on to what I've mostly been doing because these ones were actually white and also a lot of the other white ones I haven't actually decided on what I'm going to do with them yet. So my plan for tonight is to actually decide what I want to do with each of them and possibly make the actual proper rabbier ones that I want to do for the little headband which is partially what this video is going to be. So I did these. So I think overall these turned out good. <laughs> I wasn't entirely sure exactly what I was doing. I will say, I think on this side, it's a bit more shorn down than this side. That's why you're kind of getting this kind of, I don't know how to describe it, like bubbling almost look to it. Like it's not, this one's a little bit more kind of, I don't know, gradients picking up better and all the rest of it. That was something as well I noticed around the, the edge, like there's still, the black is kind of coming through. So I might even have to prime these types of things if I wanted to do a half black, half white or whatever. So that's something to pay attention to as well. I might go in and quickly add a bit of white to the, the outside just using, again, a toothbrush. Because I think that the acrylic paints or the airbrush is really fantastic for getting gradients or getting like a nice smooth, like even application on this type of, you know, fabric. I'm thinking that I would still probably use a mix of like hand painted and hand painted, hand painted. Um, did I say it right the first time and then thought I said it wrong? I don't even know. But yeah, I might use a mix of the airbrush and hand painting. I'm also thinking of using stencils as well to help kind of like mark out things so I could have stuff very uniform as well and make different versions of like different things. But yeah, like I'm gonna probably hand paint like stars on this in a moon because <laughs> that's the plan for this one. I also tried on the back, now to decide which one was the one I did on, this one. 
I tried on the back to add a deeper purple and it's mm, kind of worked. I don't know if you can see it at all, but this is like slightly more purple. <laughs> it's slightly more purple and this obviously is a lot more purple. So I'm thinking tonight I'll add a gradient of white up here and then redo a purple like this one and then just, you know, have it come down and see how that looks on both sides. So these ones turned out quite well and I think they are good for a really colouring white. Black, not so much. I think I'm willing to give, you know, the actual proper airbrushes or airbrush paints a go. I'm thinking while I was looking up airbrush stuff, I wasn't really looking up stuff to do with obviously making like ears and stuff because a lot of you know things where they talk about specifically with the machine I was using and all the rest of it and just in general airbrushes they're miniatures which is obviously another big thing that like airbrushes are used for <laughs> so it is something where I think I now need to look up ears specifically do my research and then probably go from there I think but yeah so far I'm happy with what I've learned but now it's to get some other stuff sorted so I can actually do stuff with them <laughs> I suppose so yeah See you next bit. Okay, so really quickly I just wanted to come in and kind of touch base again. So I've done a lot of priming on the black for in order to like have colour show up a lot easier because even with like this one I just painted on some more purple and it's only really made a little bit of difference. I think really if I were to go on and make some that I wanted to sell I'd probably just use white and then paint the white whatever colour I wanted, even if it is going to be black. Like, I think it's just something where, unless it's going to be like this one, which is just going to be pure black, which is why the fur is still fairly on the back of his ear. But because I wanted the light colour on here, I needed to paint on a bunch. And fair enough, I could have used the airbrush for it, but I think just for the sake of time and to get a good base on it because this is I think a base coat white and then a lilac kind of color on top of it and obviously it doesn't create a good, a good texture it's fairly like harder whereas like even with this like it's still fairly soft so there is definitely a benefit to using this but it is just because of the, the way that color lays on this black which is very 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 little it means i have to kind of prime it beforehand and again it, it is something where it's like i could use color and it does show up. like on this it does show up but it just i don't know it doesn't quite look right you know what i mean this is obviously a longer fur this one though it's shorter so you can see it a bit better but you know, it does show up, but it changes the color significantly, and it would probably need another few layers. And this is kind of almost like a priming layer, and then I'd need to actually go in again with another bit of pigment. And it would just need a fair amount more, so... <laughs> when actually making this to sell, I'd probably either get the color that I want as a base, in general, as in terms of the color of fur, which would cost more, or whatever. I mean, for this one, I put white around the edge, and you can kind of see it's a little bit whiter. Or at least it was a little way that one before. And then I also put some white into the edge here and you can kind of see it to be honest. This was just using a toothbrush and some watered down white acrylic. I'm just kind of brushing it into it. But you can kind of tell that there's been paint in it and yeah, I don't know. It's 100% worth it because I mean I've been brushing it out but it just seems like it kind of ends up pulling them out more than anything else and you still kind of get that clumpy looking effect but yeah <laughs> that's something to think about in the future if I were to go and sell these for the actual um, other ones I'm going to make I do have some short blue fur which is going to be the back of it so it'll be pretty much like this in terms of not the shape probably I'll use a different shape because it'd be going down the side of the face rather than the front or at the top and yeah the only thing I could see is these little sticky out bits at the bottom but then again, I think it only needs to stick out with one side, so I'm not too, too worried. And then, you know, I'll use white for the front so I don't have to do this, essentially. But yeah, I think, to be honest, it would be good for... I think I showed kind of the sort of thing before I saw the pieces yet. But, you know, for, for these ones, I think the black fur is predominantly going to be used for this. Unless it's, like, something black I just desperately want, like this, where it's, like, black on the back and then white on the front. But again, as I said before, I think it's worth just literally painting it whatever colour you want. Even if it's a case of you spend like a day or a good while just painting the base coat, I suppose. But yeah, I'm gonna get on with some of these and try and get.
get these done. See you in a bit.